This is Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin. Control. Because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. And welcome you... You are indeed on cruise control, and so are we. You know us. I'm Les Jackson. That other guy is Fred Staub. We're here every single week, and we are live, and we are, of course, stocked with a whole bunch of uh, stories from the car industry. Stocked up, Um, Les, right to the ceiling. Stocked up to the ceiling. Uh, We actually have a a van outside that... (laughs) Story container. <laughs> we, have, we have a whole crew unloading. Um, but the fact is, uh, stuff going on. I mean, it, it's. Uh, by the way, even though the industry has only sold 14 million vehicles last year, as opposed to the usual 17 million, it's still a big seller's market. Oh, yeah, it sure is. And I tell you, they're selling, but the prices are going up everywhere. They are on the rise. GM is no exception. And one model, a very a model you and I have talked about a lot, it's not even released yet, and it's gone up over $5,000. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I ordered two. And, and uh, here's a hint. It's so big. That if you buy this vehicle in Europe, you have to get a CDL license to drive it. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, no thanks. Uh, anyway, here, here, a little closer to Earth, could Toyota have a hydrogen-powered crossover in its lineup? Well, probably. Yeah, we'll talk about that. And uh, also, Subaru refreshes its three row ascent i actually see some i've never driven one of these but i do see them around uh town and uh we'll tell you about what they've done to uh refresh that vehicle that's right and we have a real treat uh in the last half hour ford making more than five thousand curated photographs and product brochures from the first century of the company's history that's available to the public online for the first time. This is great. I'm going to get, a, I know a whole bunch of stuff I'm going to get. Uh, Ted Ryan, who's been on the show a number of times, he's the Archives and Heritage Brand Manager. He's going to join us in person. Yep. And uh, we're going to see what stuff we can all get. Uh, I know exactly what I'm, what I'm going for right away. And I tell you, I love the brochures, the freewheeling brochure, yeah. and my favorite has to be the 1958 taxi brochure. <laughs> All the reasons to buy a 1958 Ford taxi, which actually was a pretty good looking vehicle for a taxi. <laughs> I would say you know, it's kind of a stylish vehicle for a taxi, you know? So. Yeah, actually, they did a they did, did a good job, and of course, those days, they would build up the cooling systems and the automatics. Yeah. Uh, and they, they just run them to death. Severe duty. We're going to have some oh, more <laughs> severe duty when we come back on Cruise Control. We'll tell you which GMC model has gone up almost $6,000 and it's not even released yet. Stay tuned. Hmm.
And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We are kicking around a whole bunch of story ideas here and uh, a lot going on in the automotive industry. Um, and uh, like everything in the world these days, prices are going up. Mm -hmm. What's interesting here, Les, um, we'll talk about some of these numbers going up. A couple of GM vehicles. Uh, the GMC Hummer EV, the price is going up Ooh, over cool. $6,000. <laughs> And it hasn't, I don't believe it's been released yet. It hasn't been released. Yeah. Um, so apparently it's, you just uh, go to them and you say, how much is the Hummer? And they say, how much have you got? <laughs> That's right. Uh, so the prices now for the EV2 are 86245 the EV2X 96,245 and the EV3X 106,245. Cruise control. And uh, that those are wow. some big numbers. At, according according to GMC, these prices are up six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. That's uh, well six percent. <laughs> and um, it's over. It's, like what? Three days ago? Um, yeah, they they it's they say it's the price of commodity parts. Uh, Didn't even know you no, had it's commodity not. parts. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got seventy seven thousand five hundred reservation holders. Now that but those people are going to get price protection. They say it's not going to go up for them. Oh, of course they are. <laughs> so you know there's going to be a cottage industry. To get mm -hmm. on the order books for a lot of these new vehicles coming out. And, and, and sell your order. Sell your order. Have no intention of buying it. You're just going to, you you you'll sell your, your space in line and say, well, hey, it comes with a uh, price guarantee. You can lock it in. I you bet know, people are doing that and just ordering a whole bunch of them. And I wish we had talked about this before we announced it on the air. But then you know what could happen. Nobody wants it. You get stuck with it. <laughs> well, but you don't have to take delivery. No, that's true. You might lose a deposit or something, I guess, depending on the state. Uh, more prices going up, though. Chevy Corvette, a hefty price mm -hmm. increase. I think we should call it a rugged price increase. It's a, uh, it's, yes, it's, a, it's, this is, this is the rugged era. Uh-huh. Um. Welcome to Rugged Summer. This uh, info comes from our friends over at the Mid-Engine Corvette Forum. We always like working with them. And um, Chevy has announced revised prices effective for vehicles produced on or after June 13th, 2022. Uh, select options will be revised. Dealer of invoice amounts will increase accordingly. Hmm. So the Corvette will start now for an LT1 coupe base model 65,595 it was 59,000 when it first came out wasn't that the big deal it was under 60,000 well yeah but it, it and and i'm not uh, i'm i'm certainly not saying 65,000 is is a low price but for what you get yeah. in the Corvette compared to whatever oh, it's true. competing with it is it's a bargain. LT2, which is what I think most people like, because yeah. that's got a lot, of, a lot of the options, but not the leather-wrapped um, dashboard. That goes 72895 and 77545 for the LT3, which does have that. Um, yeah, but for, for $5,000, I can buy a cow, uh, make my own leather, well, you can, yeah, you do and, nice and interior work. cover the dashboard and have a lot of extra meat. Well, uh, basically, across the board, I think that's about a twenty five hundred dollar increase. That's that's really not. I mean, compared to what else is happening these days, that's not too bad. Mm. Uh, by the way, all of the color seat belt options have increased from to four ninety five. Hmm. I, I, I would don't would you get the, no colored seat belts? No, I get whatever the standard was. Was it black? Same here. Uh, because 
if there's one thing that's going to get discolored and dirty quickly. Yep. Uh, yeah, I want it to not show. The other thing I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get. Uh, they're going to charge an additional six ninety five for a suede microfiber steering wheel. Same reason. That is a dirt collector, man. <laughs> Greasy yeah. hand. You know, your hands just have oils in them, right? Absolutely. Well, there you go. A couple of couple of price increases from the folks over at GM. When we come back, we'll tell you about a future GM car that should be a little bit less expensive and Toyota's idea for a hydrogen power CUV. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Welcome back to Cruise Control. We um, we went through the Corvettes, a uh, little price increase. Frankly, I'm not upset by that one. Uh, certainly not as much as the Hummer price increase, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm not going to buy either. Yeah. Uh, but she was. something whiz. to know about. Yeah. But there's a cheaper Chevy. <laughs> That's right. We don't really uh, know what the price is, but I think it will be cheaper than what we were discussing before. And and yeah. we don't really have much information on it, 
But it is the Blazer EV. The reveal date will be July 18th, so exactly a month from now. Yeah. Um, they say it is not going to be, like, exactly built on the Blazer platform. It will be a new platform, probably have the Ultium batteries, of course. It is EV-powered. Um, and looks kind of cool. We got uh, a picture up on our Facebook page, Cruise Control Radio Facebook page, if you want to check it's a, them. It's a, really, it's a handsome uh, CUV. It's, it's, it's neat. Yeah, and they want to get more electric vehicles out there. Uh, and there was just an article that said that almost all of their vehicles, uh, we know that they're going to do an Equinox uh, EV model, obviously the Blazer. There's going to be an EV version of all of them. EV Silverado, obviously, uh, we've talked about that a lot on the show. Yeah. So uh, it's good. But what if you say, you know what, I uh, I want something different other than electric power? Well, Toyota is talking about taking its Corolla Cross. We told you about this last week that their hybrid version was coming out um, and making it hydrogen powered. They are really thinking yep. about hydrogen power. Now, a couple of things. I, I believe in hydrogen power. I think it's good, but we have to let people in government know there are options beyond electric vehicles. And probably it's good to have options beyond electric vehicles uh, f in the future and not just burn, uh, stop burning everything. Because, you know, the grid, I, don't, I still don't see how the grid is going to take this all. Well, right now, the grid isn't. Um, it, it, the grid is, especially with massive heat waves and more to come, the grid is being stressed right now to its limits. Uh, in a lot of parts of the country, they're already um, predicting rolling blackouts. Right. And this is not a time to... to <laughs> plug to in your electric car. <laughs> plug in your, your 80 amp, right. 240 volt. Right electric charger um except maybe overnight but it, it it's this a lot of things have got to be worked on part of this infrastructure package uh is is to beef up the grid yeah um, and we're gonna have to start looking for we, we we've got to um consider everything yeah and uh you know why why France has been able to shoulder some of this? They have nuclear power. They have a yeah. lot. They well, invested in we're, nuclear power. Yep. Uh, the first nuclear permit was uh, given a, given out last year. So, oh, for a new nuclear yeah. plant in the U.S. Uh, yeah, you know we we we're, we're very good at engineering nuclear plants. Yeah. Um, and and uh, we you know let's face it, it's. We've, we've simply got to do it, and we have to do it in a smart way. Yeah. But interesting, uh, hydrogen power, you and I have talked about this, potentially a way to keep internal combustion classic cars on the road. Yep. And I think their Corolla Cross, um, which is, of course, the, the, the new Pontiac vibe, as I put it, Toyota Matrix. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is the – because that car was based on a, a Toyota um, – Corolla, uh, it could be a good candidate for this. So I think we should investigate all these things. We oh, yeah. We shouldn't just say, um, oh, hey, one way, one way. If there's, you got to find, if you're, if you're interested in one of these, you have to find a hydrogen pump. Yeah. Pump, I guess uh, you'd call it. Dispenser. <laughs> dispenser. There aren't too many around right now, but that's going to change. Yeah. So don't worry about it yeah uh, but you know but don't go out and buy one unless you know there's one reasonably close to you now here's one here's a vehicle that you can buy right now the subaru ascent uh that is their three row a lot of people don't think about this but they do have a three row trivia points for les jackson what was the name of their three row suv before the ascent oh boy it was uh, part of a region of new york city Yes. Um, the... and there's a film festival named. Oh uh, yes, the Tribeca. Tribeca. I was, <laughs> I was going Good to make tip. a joke and I call it the Battery, but 
I could have I could have been on those uh, game shows, those old game yeah. shows. Clue, you know. There's. Uh... That's a good. That was a good clue. Mm, yeah. Well, they've redone this ascent. I've actually seen a couple of these on the road, um, and uh, they uh, they look pretty good. Now, what they've done, the latest version has the the latest version of the eyesight. Uh, that is the driver assist technology. Typically, two cameras uh, on either side of the rearview mirror that point forward. This has the new wide-angle mono camera. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I love it because my wires are always broken. Uh, and this is, this is a great addition. New, new surround view uh, camera with 360-degree overhead. Great. Standard Subaru Starlink. And new cabin connect. This is funny. It's like an intercom <laughs> from the driver yeah. to the third row seats. Well, it's a long way back. It's a long way back. Yep. And then they also it's... have an Onyx edition as well, uh, kind of a blacked out edition. I have not driven one of these Ascents, but I did see I one on the either. road the other day. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. I'll have to try it. Uh, it's like an upsized Forester. You know, it's like you took the Forester and you know, put some fertilizer on it and it got bigger. That's right. Do we have a price on the accent because, or ascent? Uh, Cause I, I don't, don't think it's very inexpensive. I don't think I have the price on it. No, but it's the biggest vehicle they sell. It is boxer powered by the way, boxer engine powered. Yep. So, so there you have it. So coming up soon, uh, we're going to talk with Ted Ryan who is in charge of uh, his official title. Let's see, I have it here. Yeah, Ted Ryan, Archives and Heritage Brand Manager. He's going to be joining us after the break. And uh, Ford has done something incredible. And this is a way I will spend a lot of my time looking at the Ford Heritage Vault. It is not only great pictures of Ford vehicles, uh, but it is also... Uh, they have a tremendous amount of brochures on available. And I, I don't know about you, but I used to love getting the brochures. As a kid, I would go in. Same here. I still have the original Camaro brochure. Ted probably wouldn't like hearing that. But, yeah, I do like Chevy's as well. <laughs> Truth be told, he must yeah, like I Chevy's used as to, well. He's a historian. I used to get them every year. Yeah. And just drool over them. Yeah. And uh, some of these, they have one from the 70s, and it's got the Pinto in it. And believe it or not, I was surprised to realize the first-generation Bronco was sold up until, I think, 1977. At that point, it was pretty long in the tooth, you know? Um, well, yeah, it was. Um, so it's just great to look at all this stuff and see pictures of these cars going back to the early days. Uh, Ted is going to join us, though, after the break and uh, bring us up to date. Tell us how they came up with this idea of the vault. And uh, he can show us some of the cool things that are on the website as well. I think I'm going to be spending a lot of time on this. And it's That's great. Right. I think Ford does it the best with their um, heritage yeah. stuff. And I think Ted Ryan's a big part of that. So uh, I've, owned, uh, I've owned a lot of those Fords that uh, we're, we're, you're showing there on our Facebook page. Look at this. It's a station wagon with a rooftop <laughs> tent. I didn't and, own one of those. Yeah, but one of these would be nice, a Mach 1. So That'd be cool. Yep. Yeah. Well, we'll be right back with Ted after this. Stay tuned to Cruise Control.
Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. One of our favorite guests is Ted Ryan, who is archives and heritage brand manager for Ford. He does such a great job because, let's face it, the automotive industry and automotive history, it's all about history. And it, it really, you know, evokes, you know, where you were when that vehicle came out. You love lo looking at this stuff. You love remembering things maybe you saw uh, back in the day. And Ted, uh, well, you've got a big project here, uh, and it's basically a vault of really cool information uh, from Ford that that has been brought out and made available to the public. I mean, we always love the way Ford helps us as journalists. With you're, you're trying to tell a story, you need B-roll footage, you need uh, you know stills of old old uh, vehicles. But now this is open to the public. I guess tell us how how this whole project got started. I mean, what what was the idea behind it? This has uh, been a two year labor of love. Our team has been working to uh, digitize our collection for the past five years or so, uh, but we wanted to find a way to make it available to the general public. Uh, the picture on the screen right now is actually one of our. Uh, uh, video vaults, and that's showing some of the archives. So wow. we began with our digitization project, and and but the goal was always to be able to share it. So um, we had a team meeting almost two years ago. I'm giving you some inside pool here. And at that team meeting, I said, we're going to do something so that a kid writing a paper on a Mustang in California or a media journalist or the Mustang Enthusiast Club, they can all get stuff that they've never gotten before. So we digitized 3,000 plus photos, every Ford and Lincoln and Edsel vehicle between 1903 and 2003. And then we, more importantly, we digitized the brochure collection. 3,500 plus brochures have been digitized and placed in the Ford, uh, Ford Heritage Vault. Wow. wow. I want to play with the color selections and all that. Oh, wow. man. Everything. And that, that's part of the, the joy of the, the, the site is uh, geeking out on some of the different vehicles. I was uh, looking at a 59 T-Bird brochure the other day. Wow. And that's, that's the year that you could do all the color variations. You could have a roof that was black and the, the paint color that was a different color. And you could do all of those different variations. Um, and it's just fun to be able to, it's a trip down memory lane to be able to see all of those. And plus, uh, I did a T-Bird enthusiast uh, demo uh, the last week, and uh, they were going crazy. And then the Lincoln guy, when I did the demo for him, he said, great, I'm going to download every brochure. I'm like, you don't need to download them all. They're all here. You can get them when you want them. It's in the cloud. No need to, uh, no need to <laughs> yeah. download terabytes of information. I mean, uh, what are some of your favorite things you uh, found, Ted, like that you were surprised that you talked about the 59 T-Bird? I mean, I... I think in on the uh, the Ford media side, I just found it interesting. There was a Ford um, brochure on the 1958 uh, taxi cabs with the yeah. Forge mile, mileage maker six and all yeah. the cool features there. Just the level of information in these things was huge back then. Some of the more interesting ones, the recreational ones were amazing. Uh, you should have flashed that photo up earlier of the station wagon with the camper on top. Yeah. Well, that was I came out of a recreational brochure. Yep. And we had others like that as well. Although I will say for your listeners, if you're trying to hit the site right this very second, uh, it's down. Uh, we got killed by traffic the first day and a half in our vendor. And despite me telling them, hey, this could be really popular, they were not ready for the million hits they got in the first 15 minutes. So uh, <laughs> they are in the process, even as we speak, I just got an email moving it to a, a bigger server farm to, to be able to uh, satisfy everybody who's trying to hit the site. So Ted, they, what, what, is, content. what is the site URL so people can go there it, it it, is once, Ford, it gets, yeah. once it gets going? Yeah. <laughs> ForwardHeritageVault.com is the site URL. So if you, I just did a search on Google. If you just put in Ford Heritage Vault on Google, it's the first one that pops up as well. So uh, it, was, it was so frustrating because it was working this morning. And uh, I was so excited. I was doing another radio interview and it's working and we're walking through and he's downloading a brochure. And I was going to do that with you guys. But uh, unfortunately, it went down just a few minutes ago as they're moving it. <laughs> well, uh, it might have been me uh, downloading the entire <laughs> vault on <laughs> my other computer here. I, I'm not not saying it is. Yeah. I'm just saying well, it could be. 
It's got uh, this, you know, it guys, it's so people love automotive history. As you said, Fred, leading in, they love it. I mean, I've gotten emails from uh, from Jim Farley, our CEO, uh, who sent me a sardonic one saying, thanks for breaking the Internet, Ted. Uh, <laughs> now, now go fix it. <laughs> And then I got one from Edsel Ford who said, Ted, you built a site that's so popular, you can't keep it going, uh, which is true. It is so popular and we can't keep it going, but we will. And uh, you're showing some of the screen grabs now of, of how it's going to look and, and how it's going to work. Uh, and if you'll notice, everything in there is downloadable. Wow. Now, you can download yeah, it for free. Just, everything just is like quite free media, and downloadable. Just like the media sites where we can download uh, really high resolution photographs, which is right terrific uh so if i want to download a a, a 50 ford business coupe um that's that's uh, i'm going to do that because that was my first car it is most likely there i will say there are some gaps in the collection i i don't have my notebook next to me but i did the lincoln uh collection and uh, for Lincoln, like in 1955, I'm making it up. We may not have had a Capri. We may have only had a, uh, a Cosmopolitan. So it's just, right. there, there may be individual models that we won't have in there, uh, but we're going to commit to filling those gaps over time. Plus, this is just the first step. Uh, my team is meeting uh, as soon as we get it stable. We're going to start adding in the concept vehicles and the, the wow. vehicle yeah. clay images and there's not a single oh, picture of a Ford facility in there, but we want to get the Rouge and Highland Park and Willow Run and then our, add our World War II images in there. So there's a whole lot more to come. Well, and Mercury. We, didn't have, we haven't done anything with Mercury yet except the brochures. So uh, we'll get Mercury in there as well. Well, you know, the thing about this is they're free to download. I assume you can print them out and you can make some incredible wall art. <laughs> Out you of can. It. They're high quality. They're uh, most of the uh, scans are 600 to uh, um, uh, well about six eight hundred DPI. Uh, the one thing is, and on the front there's a warning saying it's only for personal and editorial use. So in right. other words, the media can download anything, but it says any commercial use would have to be approved. So uh, I hope that people won't get too excited about making coffee cups or T-shirts and selling them on Etsy but, uh, but, using our, our images. Yeah, but but if you wanted to download it and you wanted to get a blow up made just for your yes. own use, that would be fine. So that's fine. No, no, uh, that's yeah. great. That's amazing. I mean, to I, imagine you talk about World War II images, planes com coming off off the line, or or anything like this. It'd just be beautiful wall art. I, yeah. I, I talked to a dealer. One of the dealers is going to set up a kiosk in his dealership so that as people are killing time in the dealership, they'll be able to peruse old brochures and old images. I, I thought that, that was a brilliant that's idea. A brilliant idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what have yeah, you I, discovered, I, I, uh, Ted, that was a surprise going through all this stuff as, as an archivist and that you must have just uncovered something like, like we were talking about? Before, I don't have it right at my fingertips here, but the uh, station wagon with the rooftop tent and the shower on the side, that's right out of <laughs> overlanding uh, 2022 now, but that that was from uh, from the 50s, I guess. Um, well, one of the things I discovered is that we made really big cars in the 70s. They were land yachts when, oh, yeah. when you get to the 70s yeah. and you, you see a Continental uh, Mark IV or Mark V, it's uh, enormous. The other thing that was interesting to me is there were not as many brochures from uh, the 20s and 30s. I mean, essentially, it was a Model T, but still there's not, uh, you know, and then in the 30s, you have those varieties. We, our collection was weak on the brochures in the 20s and 30s. So it's really strong after 1950, uh, but we had some gaps early on. Uh, the Mustang, the multi-vehicle brochures, and the other thing, too, as I was uh, telling my staff, it's like, I think we could teach American history using nothing but these brochures because you see fashions change, styles change, uh, everything changes over time. And, and you can see that evolutionary growth uh, of the auto industry and of, of people in general uh, by looking through these brochures. Yeah, I was looking at the uh, one from the uh, late 70s, a couple of it was like a multi model brochure. Couple of yeah. things, take takeaways. It reminded me of uh, Charlie's Angels because they had the Pintos and the Mustang Twos, <laughs> yep. all the cars they drove. <laughs> and then I was surprised that the first generation Bronco lived on until 1977. By that time, it was 
pretty old old looking compared to the rest of the lineup you know that's actually a sad tale do you know why it lived on the the second generation of bronco was canceled it was there were, there were two varieties one was called the short horn and one was called the midhorn those were the code names for them uh dick nesbitt was a designer working on them and uh he shared the drawings with me but during the uh, arab oil crisis and the the renewed focus on uh catalytic converters and mileage and this and that and the other uh the second gen bronco was killed in uh, 1974 or it was gonna be the 74 bronco was gonna be second gen and it was killed in 72. Would, that's why that first generation went all the way till 78. will you have pictures of those vehicles that were never never released down the road but yes very cool we'll be right back with cruise control stay tuned
Welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We are talking with Ted Ryan, who um, has an incredible job, archives and heritage brand manager. He has a, a big success on here of this new site from Ford. They very generously have put a tremendous amount of photos and um all kinds of brochures and it it's less how much time do you think you'll be spending on this a lot uh, <laughs> i'm going to be first i'm going to download every ford i've owned which is <laughs> yeah i i would do that quite a number mhm mm um then i'm going to go after the gt40 information yeah I... um and then and the concepts once they come online because uh, Ford had some really cool concepts. Uh, I just found out yesterday that Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was a Ford. That's news to me. I didn't know I, that one. I, I, at the, I was watching the movie. I hadn't seen it for 50 years, but I was, and I was looking at the credits at the end, and it said vehicle, uh, vehicle construction uh thanks to the ford motor company oh. so i want to research that and find out okay what did ford do there <laughs> i'm going to research that one too our la uh department uh and i have a good relationship i've been doing a whole lot of research on james bond uh uh ford vehicles over time i'm going to add chitty chitty bang bang to that list that's yeah, I mean, of course I, now I've got that song stuck in my head. So oh no! Much. And, you're, and I you're apologize warm. for that, but see now it leaves me and goes to you. <laughs> yeah. So. Ted, uh, we were talking uh, before the break that it not only will be production vehicles on the Ford Vault site, but it will be vehicles that we talked about the that that second generation Bronco. They designed it, but then the situation changed business wise, and they didn't do it. That's interesting that they're going to put those up there as well. Well, the, well, today is me. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's interesting that you will put them up there as well. <laughs> you know what the goal is on this site? And from the very beginning, day one, it's to share content with our fans and enthusiasts, whether it's good, whether it's bad. And yes, the Edsel's in there now. Uh, so there, I just curated a collection of 150-ish Edsel photos and all the Edsel brochures are there. But but you have to be able to share and you have to be open and transparent. And that's what the goal is. So uh, a couple of categories are going to be difficult, but we're going to tackle them. Like motorsports, you have all the different third-party logos on there mm -hmm. that might make it so they couldn't be downloadable. And once again, so we'll, our philosophy of everything free and downloadable may preclude some motorsports from going in there. It will preclude any ads from going in there where we can't put ads on there because we don't have the rights to them. The talent rights will have expired. Uh, so if the site is going to remain free and downloadable, it's going to uh, make sure it's going to make it so that it's mainly going to be images of vehicles and or employees and or buildings that we own, et cetera. So the other big collection is we just finished scanning 60,000 Ford of England negatives. And oh, wow. uh, I've got somebody who's working now curating the complete library of every car built by Ford of England. Wow. And that's going to be exciting as well. Console and the yeah Capri. Uh, what about all the trucks is that a separate entity or... separate entity it's coming now the f series are in there now but we really just focused on the f uh f1 f100 f150 and f250 Bronco. Uh, the brochure wise we did get up into the sixes and sevens um but photo photographically we focused on the passenger vehicles rather than the work vehicles wow yeah, it, it, it's just amazing stuff. Uh, and, and once again, you can download these things. You can print them out as long as you're not selling them. Uh, if you're using it to hang on your wall. And what a beautiful way to decorate your office with all this. Uh, this Ford is the only manufacturer, I believe, that has done this that I can think of. Maybe more uh, will follow now once they see your success. <laughs> The only U.S. auto manufacturer that's done this, but I will say Mercedes has a killer site uh, uh, for their historical materials, and they have some old press releases on there as well. And uh, but U.S. auto wise, yes, we're uh, we've got the largest collection. Chevy does, or GM has some brochures online, but nothing uh, approaching the thirty five hundred that we have. Um, and uh, uh, Stellantis has a smallish image library. Um, 
But, you know, keep in mind, Ford didn't have anything until Thursday. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but, but hopefully other automakers will follow this lead. And once again, the goal is to, when we sat down, we said, okay, if a student writing a paper, a media uh, journalist looking for a last second image or fact to fill out a story, right. a casual fan or an enthusiast, those are our four categories that we're gearing it, this up for. What, what can we give them that they want? Uh, and I think particularly the brochures are more for the journalists and the enthusiast. Uh, and then the image library is, is for the student and for the casual fan. And if you use these, like, do we have to credit them or is it, no. so no. it's, uh, what do they call that open? Yeah, uh, open uh, co uh, creative comments. It's, yeah, like, like yeah. just as inside baseball, when we use stills that people see during the show, they're provided hey you're talking yeah. about the vehicle so you can show the vehicle and that's that's kind of how it yeah. works great stuff uh ted i i mean uh, i've worked on some similar projects not not this big but uh it's just the amount of material it must have it must have taken you a long time to do this it's taken two years and it's been a labor of love and uh keep in mind too that you know, you're talking to an archivist this is what i do for a living and the ability to be able to share our collection and the rest of my team feels exactly the same way is exciting for us. You know, this is, this is what archivists love to do. We, we collect, we preserve, and we disseminate historical material. So we've collected it, we've preserved it. It's, you know, uh, when you were showing some of the pictures in the archives, uh, those negatives are actually stored in, in uh, chilled coolers that we cool it down to 38 degrees. And wow. that will help the negative last hundreds of years. So, uh, wow. The, we have, uh, he's showing some of the photos of the archives. We have uh, 30,000 square feet, 16,000 uh, cubic meters of, uh, or cubic feet of, of paper, 2.5 million photos, and hundreds of thousands of, of video titles. Wow. Uh, there's some Broncos in the archives here. That was going to be the, for the Bronco launch in, in 2020, but unfortunately COVID uh, uh, wiped it out. All the media were going to be invited to the archives, and we had curated a display of the Bronco through the years. It's just a cool looking place, well, the archives. They look like a yeah. bunker or we'll something. We'll hold Let's... on for the next party. <laughs> uh, I want to cut. Uh, how, how deep so far have you gone into the World War II production? Uh, you know, the, all those pictures of the, the bombers coming off the assembly line at every hour. And... Yeah. Photographically, we've, we've scanned quite a bit, but keep in mind in 1956, Ford donated a large portion of its. Uh, photographic and paper collections to the Henry Ford Museum. Uh, so that World War II collection is a split collection. We have portions of it and the Henry Ford has other portions of it. Then we donated all of our moving image footage, all of the films to the National Archives. So if any, if you're, uh, uh, Les and Fred, if you're bored one day, go to National Archives or, or type in National Archives Ford Motor Company Film Collection and you can watch all these amazing uh, films. Ford paid to have them digitized and, and um, by the oh, National Archives. And you can watch great. these great movies on the production of uh, uh, planes during World War II or, or uh, the building of the Rouge prior to World War II. It, it's a fantastic way to kill time on a boring conference call. <laughs> you can get Man. lost in history, yeah. Uh, Ted, once again, what is the website? We know you're having a little bit of teething yeah. pains here, but you'll get them sorted out. Yep, the website is uh, FordHeritageVault.com, and as Fred mentioned, uh, uh, our we, we broke our server. Or the the uh, enthusiastic Ford fans broke our server, so we're having to move it to a, a bigger uh, server farm to to get it up and going. And I will guarantee you, the site will be better next weekend than it is this weekend. But FordHeritageVault.com. Yeah, very good, Ted. We always enjoy having you on the show because uh, yeah. you have that passion for this. And we, we share the passion. We just don't happen to have, have all those things that are made. Maybe we do now, right, Les? <laughs> so, oh, we, oh, we're going to have it, I guarantee you. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you listening to Cruise Control. Make sure you check out that site. Make sure you check out our site, cruisecontrolradio.com. Time for me to say I'm Fred Staub. I'm Les Jackson. We'll see you down the road. Bye.